In this tutorial, we'll be going over the system board and the processes that are available from here. This video will not demonstrate the creation of any sounds, but will show you how to navigate through the program based on what's available on the system board. This is the system board as we see it upon launching a new project. It takes up a good amount of the screen when open to its full view. Since we'll be looking at the leftmost column first, I'm going to collapse this full view so that we can focus on that section of the screen first. Notice that you can click the full view toggle to collapse most of this window. What we're left looking at is the creation column. All of the software's most vital systems are available or accessible from here. Moving from top to bottom and left to right, let's see what we can do in this window. In the top left portion of the creation column is a large power switch. This switch will turn the audio engine on and off. The switch is on when the software is opened, but it can be toggled off if you need to free up system resources or need to turn off the audio for any reason. Note that this will not stop all MSDP processes, only those that are sending or receiving audio signals. This means that any running automation may continue to its completion, even if the power button is switched off. To the right of the power button is our master volume control. We see two volume sliders paired with two signal meters. All audio going out to your interface or to your speakers will be sent out from here, so these sliders act as the final volume control for your entire project. There are two other locations where we can control the signal volume going to your sound card, but this location should be the easiest to access. Keep your eyes on the meters to make sure that your signal doesn't get too loud. If you see the meters go into the red at regular intervals, you should bring the volume slider down to make sure that your speakers and your ears don't get damaged. Immediately below the power button we find the full view toggle. You've already seen this in action when I collapsed the window before. The full view provides us with a variety of secondary screens that may be important to us as we build our project. To make sure these screens are always available but never unnecessarily in the way, the toggle allows us to only see these screens when we need them. Toggle the switch to the on position to expand the window. Toggle the switch off to collapse it. We'll look at the full view screens in detail in a later video. To the right of the full view toggle, we have our CPU meter. This display will show us how much of our CPU's processing capacity is being used as we make our music. If you hear the signal start to cut in and out, see if your CPU is working too hard. As the meter approaches 100%, your processor may begin to struggle to keep up with the demands of your music and your other system processes. Most MSDP processes are very lean and don't demand much from your CPU. A few of our more complex tools can get pretty CPU intensive, so make sure to check out this meter if you're experiencing cutout of the audio. Below the toggle and CPU meter, we see a darker row with a three-line column and the words Add New Board. Hovering the mouse over this area reveals that it can be clicked on. Doing so will open a new window with an empty pedal board in it. You may remember from the introduction video that all sound generation and manipulation will happen on pedal boards. We won't be discussing pedal boards just yet, but it's important to note that these boards can be generated from the creation column. Below this, we see an MSDP button with the text Load Board File next to it. Clicking this button will bring up a dialog window where we can select a saved board from any location on our computer. Below that is a list of all the pedal boards we've saved with the project. Selecting a saved board from this menu will load a new instance of that board. To the right of the load options, we see three text buttons that lead to other windows. New Automator creates a new Automator board. These boards provide extended controls for the modules that we will load into our pedal boards. The score player acts as a fairly straightforward tool for navigating through user-made computer scores. Scores are one of the most advanced aspects of the system, so we'll leave a discussion of this for later. The last button opens the audio file manager. Several processes in Music SDP can utilize audio files and allow us to manipulate them in different ways. Files need to be loaded into our project folder before we can open them inside the project. The Audio File Manager window is where we will add audio files to our project and where we can review what files we currently have at our disposal in the project. We'll be reviewing this screen in detail in a future video.
The limiter, when toggled on, keeps your audio signal from going into the red, ensuring that your ears and speakers stay safe from damage. The limiter works by compressing the signal when it gets too loud, which can cause unwanted distortion in your sound. If you want to make sure that your signal stays unblemished, consider turning the limiter off and keeping the signal safe by monitoring the volume exclusively with a master volume slider. The final section of the system board provides the controls to make recordings from the audio that you generate in Music STP. To make a recording, first type in a name that you'd like for your audio files, then hit the record button to begin. Include dry mics is a great option for people who are playing an instrument into the system and would like to keep a recording of their performance before it gets filtered by the program. Recorded audio files will be saved in the recorded audio subfolder in your project folder. We'll get more into using the recording tools in a later video. This finishes our overview of the system board. In the next video, we'll take our first proper look at the pedal board and walk through loading and using modules.